If history can teach us anything, it is that a nation built on material values, be it a city like Babylon or an empire like Rome, can never last forever. Like the survival instinct in man, materialism can never amount to the totality of the needs of man. Beneath an instinct to survive lurks a divine instinct, always striving for a greater purpose, something beyond the now of the material to the why of the spiritual. It has been said that Japan has risen to become a great nation through the means of materialism and technology. It has been said that the progress is the work of modern educational institutions. But these are only half-truths. Does ever a piano, be it the product of great workmanship, burst forth into a symphony without a master's hand? The most sophisticated computers do not code of their own accord. Indeed, it is the spirit that dwells within the nature of the Japanese that guides their progress. They are an intriguing people with much discipline and their age-old virtues of courage, honor, and forgiveness have helped this nation survive through the atrocities committed against them. For centuries, the Japanese have attributed the spirit guiding their hands and beating in their hearts as the ghosts of their ancestors. The Japanese society is a very nice society. People are very diligent, they are very obedient, they respect the rules, and they are very reflective people. え、120年前ぐらいにオープンしました。オープンした後に日本は帝国主義、インペリアリズムの時代になって、その時にはすごく攻撃的になりました。その後、あの、広島長崎があって、戦争に負けた後にはインペリアリズムについて反省して、その後
、新党は始まりを知らないというところに特徴があります。日本はもともと自然信仰、えー、偉大な自然というものに、えー、戦って勝てるものではなくて、自然の中で自然と融和して生きるということを学び大切に思ってきた民族だと思います。シントイズムは日本の自然を愛する宗教です。で、自然を作った誰かについては我々は知りません。考えたこともありません。そこが違います。神道は神様がいません。神道は作られたものについてすごいなと思う宗教です。森であるとか大きな川であるとか、えー、富士山のような。巨大な山脈であるとかそういうものに神が宿るというふうに考えるようになりました。Life has evolved in the last few centuries has become ever more complex. Callings greater than the simple way of life distract our attention today and the ancient ways of the world have fallen short of providing solutions for the complex challenges we face today. A new spiritual way of life is needed. Which should be universal in nature to reconnect mankind to the Spirit of God. Today, only one religion in the world claims to have such a message Islam. The arrival of Islam was the dawn of a new era in the history of the world. The voice of Muhammad. Peace and blessings of God be upon him, aroused the sleeping forces of Arabia. After this crucial turning point, Arabia underwent a revolutionary transformation, becoming instantly illuminated by the bright light of its new spiritual life. Unlike all other prophets who were limited to a specific people and time, Muhammad, the holy prophet of Islam, peace and blessings of God be upon him, brought A message for all of mankind. Islam can civilize a nomadic nation of Arabs who were once barbaric in nature. One can only wonder at the effect it may have on a nation who are already deeply spiritual. Unfortunately, Islam has suffered at the hands of time. Like all other religions that have come before it. Just as the followers of all religions seem to have forgotten the essence of their beliefs, the Japanese way of life has also suffered the same fate. Internet, IT, no, Hattats, Code Sangyoka, Sekai Global Kasta Kezai, no, Ngoki, Nado, Niote, 若者の道徳観というものも変わってきていることは間違いなしだと思います。世界的にどこでも同じで、まあ日本だけじゃないとは思いますけど、そうですね。まあ多分そういう宗教的な教育がないので、その宗教の大切さとかを日本人に伝えられてないところがあるとは私は思います。It has been predicted. And predictions have been corroborated by the events of the last century that a time will come when humanity will suffer great moral degradation and the world will crumble to dust. Prophets of the past have prophesied that when such a time appears, a man will arise like a phoenix to lead the world out of such darkness and into light. Desirable and probable as the fulfillment of such a prophecy is, we must not forget that a phoenix rises only from its own ashes, and that it does not descend from the heavens above. Neither does it fly on wings borrowed from angels. The promised uh, Messiah, uh, peace be up upon him, was supposed to come, was uh, uh, written in different books also. On the, on the Bible, on the Quran, no? is, but uh, people, they didn't know when he was supposed to come. The kingdom of God is within you. It does not come rolling down the mountains, however lofty. It does not come sailing across the seas, however broad. God has granted, says the Quran, 
to every people a prophet in every age. And as such, in this age, a man has claimed to be that prophet, that Messiah, that reformer, to reestablish the connection between God and man. His name is Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian. Ahmed claimed that he was the reformer of the latter days sent by God, the Almighty, to turn the people away from materialism and return them to their creator. He founded the Ahmadiyya Muslim community and invited his followers to toil and sweat, to persevere and be patient, and inform them that those who seek to live must be prepared to part with their lives. He prepared them for a long and painful struggle against blind opposition and persecution at the hands of those whom they love and endeavor to save. As the Messiah for the world, and not just limited to the Muslims, Ahmed was aware of the spiritual and religious sentiment of the Japanese nation. He mentioned that the Japanese are in search of a magnificent religion. A group of people from my community should be prepared for this task, who are both competent and courageous, and are also good orators. And he has mentioned his desire that as Japanese people, they are in search of truth, in search of peace. So therefore, a very comprehensive book about Islam should be compiled and published. And very importantly, he received a revelation uh, about Japan. Although the word Japan was not mentioned in that revelation, but a clear indication of the, its uh, being a very mighty power that was mentioned there. The wording is, Ek Mashriki Takat or Korea Ki Nazakhalat. An Eastern power in the dire state of Korea. After this war, Japan, which is in the East, rose as a political power, and the revelation vouchsafed to the promised Messiah long before signs of its happening was fulfilled to the letter. In accordance with the desire of the promised Messiah, the first step to propagate the message of Islam and Ahmadiyyad was taken by a renowned companion, Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Sadiq, may God be pleased with him, and he began writing letters to the Japanese from Qadian. With the start of the blessed Tariqa Shadid scheme, the missionary work of the community gained new heights and began to spread throughout the world. The second Khalifa of the Promised Messiah, His Holiness Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed, may God be pleased with him, who started this scheme, said, The first task of Tariqa Shadid is to establish at least one person in each country of the world who can firmly grip the standard of Islam and wave the flag high in the air. In Japan, it should not be a Hindustani waving the flag of Islam. Rather, there should be some native Japanese who firmly uphold the standard of Islam. Friday Sermon, 1st of December, 1939. In another place, he said, Japan is such an extraordinary nation. If we can establish a mission there, then the voice of Ahmadiyyad will echo throughout East Asia. Friday Sermon, 19th of November, 1954. In the history of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Japan, the 4th of June, 1935, is a day to always remember. In 1935, the very first official missionary was sent there, and that was Sufi Abdul Qadir Sahib. And while he was there, the second missionary, uh, Hafiz Abdul Ghafoor Sahib, was also sent there. So both of them, they worked there together, and in 1941, then both of them had to come back because of the situation of the world at that time. It was not possible for them to continue, and the mission which opened, that had to be temporarily closed. In August of 1945, the United States of America dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which resulted in utter devastation. His Holiness, Khalifa Tumasi II, may God be pleased with him, 
strictly condemn this inhumane act of brutality and expressed the community's solidarity with the war-stricken Japan. え、そして、え、新しい生活、家族を守り、え、豊かな生活を一日でも早く回復したい、え、その気持ちで、え、頑張ってきたんだと思います。during these last few days of World War II, His Holiness Khalifa Tumasi II saw a dream regarding Japan. He states, I was told in a dream that the Japanese nation, which is in dire condition at this moment, God will attract their hearts toward Ahmadiyyat, and gradually they will gain momentum and strength. They will readily answer to my call, just as the birds answered the call of Prophet Abraham. In service to the nation of Japan, a devout Ahmadi Muslim, Sir Chaudhry Muhammad Zafrullah Khan, a companion of the Promised Messiah, who was the first foreign minister of Pakistan and Pakistan's delegate to the United Nations Security Council, played a crucial role in the post-war Japanese peace settlement. While most of the Western countries, including Great Britain and the United States of America, focused on imposing comprehensive restrictions on Japan's post-war political and economic role, Zafrullah Khan argued at the San Francisco Conference on Japanese Peace Treaty that the restrictions placed were unfair and urged a speedy and unconditional restoration of Japanese sovereignty and supported an early peace settlement. <laughs>元パキスタン外務大臣に日本人の一人として素晴らしい演説をなさいました。え、その、え、重要な点は、え、日本の平和は、え、正義と公正によって実現されなければならない。復讐や反発を、の気持ちを持ってはならないというものでした。え、あの、この、え、外、外務大臣の演説もあって、
Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed. A number of Japanese natives requested His Holiness to send a missionary and research scholar to understand the Japanese nation and be more capable of spreading the message of Islam. In response, His Holiness sent Chaudhry Khalil Ahmed Nasser Saab on a temporary basis to Japan. In response to his prayers, the humble flame of Islam was reignited in Japan and many fortunate Japanese individuals began accepting the call of Islam. One such person was Mr. Kobayashi, who traveled to Rabwa in 1959 and accepted Ahmadiyyat at the hands of His Holiness, the Second Khalifa. He studied for some time at Jamia Ahmadiyyat before returning to Japan to preach. <laughs> その in 1968, whilst on tour to Japan, Sahib Zada Mirza Mubarak Ahmed Saab, Wakali Allah and Wakila Tapshir analyzed the feasibility of establishing a permanent mission house in Japan. You Japan ke rasm rivaj Japan ke mazahib Japaniyon ke mazhabi rujhanat ka jayda liya aur Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wassalam ke farmudat ke mutabik Japaniyon ko tabligh Islam ki mansooba bandi ke bare mein jalsa salana pe ek taqreer ki aur ek khaka pesh kiya uski roshni mein Japan mein dobara jang azim dom ke baad dobara mubalighin ko bhijwane ka silsila shuru hua After his tour some assessments were made and accordingly his Holiness Mirza Nasser Ahmed Khalifa Tumasi III sent Major Abdul Hamid, a missionary of the Jamaat, to Japan. As a result of his tireless efforts, the message of Islam and Ahmadiyyat began to spread swiftly, and as a result, 30 fortunate souls accepted Islam. Whilst Major Abdul Hamid Saab was still in Japan, Atul Majib Rashid Saab, missionary of the Jamaat, was also sent to Japan to spread the message of the true Islam. One of the main thing of our activity there, still I think it goes on, was the distribution of literature. I had a very small car of my own, Toyota, white color. Then I asked a painter to fill the car with some slogans and writings in Arabic, in Japanese, in English. And I took out the speaker from inside and put it on the top of the car. And then it was a missionary car. I prepared, got some literature printed and also a audio tape for that purpose. And then I was able, by the grace of Allah, to travel to three main areas of Japan, very remote areas, and uh, some islands as well. There, nobody might have gone before with that message of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam. In the Japan, वस्ती शहर नगोया में अहमदिया सेंटर कायम हुआ और इसके साथ ही तबलीग का इशात का सिलसिला अल्लाह ताला के फजल से ज्यादा वसी हो गया और उसके साथ यह हुआ कि जापान में जलसा सालाना के निजाम का इजरा हुआ मजलिस शुरा का निजाम कायम हुआ खुदा मुल अहमदिया की तंजीम कायम हुई लजना इमाइल्ला की तंजीम कायम हुई और जो जमात का निजाम है वो बाकायदा मुनज्जम बुनियादों पर उसने काम शुरू किया Another milestone in the history of Jamaat Ahmadiyya Japan was the translation of the Holy Quran in Japanese. This translation was eventually published in 1988 after two years of efforts and receiving guidance from His Holiness, Mirza Tahir Ahmed, may God be pleased with him, Khalifa to Masih the Fourth. え、小説でね、ま、食べられるような毎日でしたから。だからこれはもちろん、もう障害かけてね、これは私がやった仕事だよという成果を上げようと。
一生懸命にやりました。はい。In 1989, His Holiness Mirza Tahir Ahmed, Khalifa to Masi the Fourth, visited Japan. The visit attracted a large number of media representatives. Events were held in honor of His Holiness, but importantly, it was during this visit that the fourth Khalifa delivered the first ever Friday sermon of a Khalifa in Japan. آج تک میں کسی قوم کے اخلاق سے اتنا متاثر نہیں ہوا جتنا جاپانی قوم کے اخلاق سے متاثر ہوا ہوں ان کے اندر سچائی ہے اور اتنی واضح ہے ان کی سچائی کہ شاید ہی کسی قوم میں اس کثرت سے سچ بولنے والے موجود ہوں جتنی جاپانی قوم میں ہیں ان کے اندر باوجود دنیا کی عظیم بڑائیوں کے بڑے بڑے ممالک کو انہوں نے گھٹنے ٹیک کرنے پر مجبور کر دیا ہے پھر بھی انکسار موجود ہے اور یہ ایک بہت ہی بڑا خلق ہے جس کو اللہ تعالیٰ ہمیشہ پیار اور محبت کی نظر سے دیکھتا ہے On the 8th of May 2006, Jamaat Ahmadiyya Japan was blessed again with the presence of a Khalifa. This time, it was His Holiness, Khalifa Tumasi V. It was the first time that a Khalifa would attend Japan's Jalsa Salana and also the first time a Friday sermon would be broadcast live from a Khalifa in Japan. Allah Ta'ala ke fadl se dunia ki dousri jamaaton ki tarah jamaat ahmadiyya Japan bhi tarakki ki taraf badhne wali aur is taraf qadam badhne wali jamaaton mein se hai. During his visit, His Holiness instructed that a mosque be established in Japan and called upon the Jamaat to achieve the same. Miraculously, these wishes of His Holiness came to fruition in 2013 as the scheme for the construction of the mosque began. In this time, Mr. Sayyid Nahuzur Anwar Ayyadahullah bin Nasir Aziz has been able to make a special way in Japan. حضور انور نے مسجد کے لیے جگہیں دیکھنے مسجد کے لیے ایک جائزہ پیش کرنے کا ارشاد فرمایا مسجد کمیٹی کے قیام کا حضور نے جاپان کے دورے میں ارشاد فرمایا اور اللہ تعالیٰ کا فضل ایسا ہوا کہ اگلا دورہ جو دو ہزار تیرہ میں ہوا اللہ تعالیٰ نے حضور انور عید اللہ بن نصر عزیز کی زبان مبارک سے نکلے ہوئے الفاظ بڑی شان سے پورے کیے This building was originally a leisure center and initially it had seemed difficult to get permission for it to be transformed into a mosque. Despite these legal issues, however, by the sheer grace of Allah the Almighty, along with the guidance given by His Holiness Amir Mu'minin, these hurdles proved to be only temporary. え、日本アハマディアムスリム教会の皆さんは、え、最高の活動をなさって課題を克服されたと思います。で、その強い気持ちに私もご加されて法的にできることは最大限応援させていただこうと決意して仕事をしました。Vital Ahad Mosque is not just the first Ahmadi Mosque in Japan, but in all of Eastern Asia. There are already approximately 100 mosques in Japan. However, this mosque is the second largest in terms of its overall capacity in the entire country. Islam is 9.11. あの、ジハードって思ったっていうのがあるんですけれども、あの、そういうおっかないイメージ。あの、それがあったんですね。だからどんな人かわからないけど、集団としてなんか怖いことをするかもしれないっていう、そういう人たちと私は付き合うのっ
あの住んでるんだよとか日本の生活にもう馴染んでるのよとかっていうことが分かってそれで私自身の心も落ち着いたし県の人たちに分かっていただくこともできる。This is a nation which is going to make more and more progress. As the revelation of the promised Messiah also indicated that it's going to be a very strong nation. But the fact is that no nation can really be strong without the belief in God. Otherwise, worldly facilities, worldly progress and development, these are no doubt very good things. But they cannot, these things cannot give the real peace of heart, peace of mind. The people, and that can only be given by the belief in God and by following the commandments of God. So, in this context, I would like to say that these people actually stand in dire need of being told about a living God. I am of this opinion that without this belief of belief in the living God, no nation can make any progress. They may advance in material on the material side. But on the spiritual side, they would always be lacking. And these people, they really deserve because they have shown through their progress that they are hardworking, honest, intelligent people. So if these people, they really understand and believe in a living God and develop their relationship with God Almighty, then no other nation can stop their way to the victory and success. Though war clouds hang heavy upon our horizon, we believe that the wings of the angel of peace can disperse them. The history of the world confirms the prophecy the meek shall inherit the earth.